So we're going to be talking about anti-inflammatory. I'm going to remember to stand still. Um, specifically, we're going to be centering this talk around Wobenzyme and what it does when you ingest it. But we're also going to talk about systemic enzymes, what they do, importance of fighting inflammation naturally, and um, just uh, really the, the hazards of ingesting too much uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, so Advil, ibuprofen, things like that. So talked about a newly emerging disease pathway for uncontrolled inflammation. I mean, most people when think inflammation, they're thinking of sore joints, they're thinking about an injury, things like that. But inflammation is really the cause of a lot of things in our body. And it leads to, we obviously know, joint and tissue pain, but it's not limited to heart, just those. We also have heart disease, stroke, circulatory disorders as well. Um, there's also now, according to the New England Journal of Medicine, there's a strong... Uh, correlation between inflammation and most heart disease. So it's really a lot more than joint and tissue pain, although the majority of people who suffer from inflammation are suffering from joint and tissue pain. So Consumer Health Digest reports millions of Americans are turning to prescription, over-the-counter, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory or NSAIDs in effort to ease pain. So in 2004, there was about 100,000 hospitalizations related to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And these are people taking them regularly within the parameters of their use. They're not opening a bottle and ingesting the whole bottle. They're taking two to six to eight a day just to manage their pain levels. Uh, recalls have been issued or voluntary done for the COX-2 inhibitors due to serious adverse side effects, including death. Some people have died in certain extreme uh, situations due to cardiovascular events. So what are we all, what are we all doing here? You're, le you're looking for a safe, natural alternative. So let's talk about Wobenzyme a little bit. Wobenzyme is a natural solution, systemic enzymes to support healthy inflammation within the body. These enzymes, we're going to get into them in a couple next couple slides, but they are essentially the catalyst for your body's immune system. Um, and this is enteric coated, so it's systemic, not a digestive. Now, if you look at the, we're going to go through the ingredients, you're going to see some overlap. Um, but these are systemic, not digestive. And I will explain the difference. What's in it? Blend of enzymes for both plant and animal. So you're getting plant and animal enzymes. Uh, this is the authentic germ formula. There were some counterfeits out on the market. And there's about, oh, there's well over 160 clinical, sti clinical styles, clinical studies on this product. So it was a very, very clinically studied product. So specifically, again, if anybody's taking a digestive enzyme, they're reading the screen and they're saying, I, I recognize some of these. So bromelain from pineapple, we have enzymes from the pancreas. These are the animal ones. Uh, trypsin, chemotrypsin pancreatin, which is a mixture of the two. We also have papayan, which comes from papayas. Um, there's also rutasud, which is, comes from a flower bud of a Japanese. Now, we talked about the fact that they're systemic, not digestive. They are absorbed into the lower intestine. So they're not going to be digested, so you take them away from food. So what does systemic stand for body-wide? So that means they're used throughout your body. An enzyme is biocatalyst, so what it does is it speeds up a reaction. We have a reaction in our body. We take these enzymes, the reaction happens quicker and more often. And the nice thing about these enzymes is, is that they are used continuously throughout the body. We don't use them once and then pass them. The enzymes are used. They have a very long half-life, so they're used quite a bit before, they're, before we discard them. In our body, we have about 3,000 enzymes, give or take, and they manage about 7,000 reactions. So again, the enzymes are the catalyst for these reactions. Specifically, systemic enzymes, we're going to talk about a couple functions that they have here, but we're going to focus on the natural anti-inflammatory, but they're also responsible for anti-fibrosis, blood cleansing, and then immune system modulating. So let's get into those a little bit more in depth. So natural inflammatory, natural inflammation is sometimes good. When our bodies become inflamed, that means that we have an injury, so your immune system triggers that if you tweak your right knee doing yard work in the over the weekend, it tweaks the inflammation sent down. Your body tells you, hey, your knee is hurting. You need to take care of it. You need to correct the problem. You either need to rest or you need to take something to make sure this inflammation is gone. So some inflammation is good. It tells us when our body is in pain. Now, an overabundance of inflammation, that's when we get into that's not good. 
So your body creates with these what we call circulating immune complexes or CICs. CICs go to a localized area to where the injury is. And that's, where, that's what causes the inflammation. Now these enzymes are going to help find the CICs and they help remove them from our system. How do they do that? We're going to explain that really in depth in the couple, next couple slides here. The nice thing about this is the enzymes are, they call it a lock and key. The enzymes are coded or they have a shape where they only attach to the negative CICs. So we have good CICs in our body too. We have some good inflammation. But this is only going to attach to the negative ones. And we have no risk of toxicity from taking ibuprofen, Tylenol, things like that. And we talked about only the negative CICs. We have circulated immune com complexes that line our stomach. So what's the biggest thing that you hear from people taking Tylenol or Advil too long? It eats away the lining of their stomach? That's why, because those CICs are circulating and they're covering the, the lining of our stomach. And the Tylenol the Tylenol, the Advil are getting rid of all the CICs, where the enzymes are only just getting rid of the negative ones and keeping the ones that we need to live on. Antifibrosis. Enzyme production as we age declines. You reach your peak about 27, 28, and then your body's like, hey, we're gonna, I need to stop producing these enzymes as much because if not, I'm gonna be, by the time I hit 40, I'm not gonna have any enzyme production left. So that's why we see slow. That's why as we age, we become more susceptible to scars, scar tissues. If you have a wound, it's not gonna heal as great as you were when you were 15. So antifibrosis, these enzymes are actually going to eat away at the scar tissue. So if you have some scar tissue, some tumors, things like that, these enzymes are going to help eat away at that gradually. Making sure I got all my points here. Blood cleansing. These enzymes are going to flow through our blood system and remove all of the unwanted items from our blood. We're talking antibodies, antigens, circulating immune complexes, or excess fibrin. And it reduces the stickiness of the blood cells, so it makes the blood a little bit more flow, a little bit better, which can help reduce strokes and some heart attacks by causing blood clots. It also breaks down the dead material small enough so we can pass it immediately through our bowel, which is very good. And it also cleanses the FC receptors on the white blood cells, which helps improve their function. Now, immune system modulation, this will, if you have an auto, suffer from an autoimmune disorder, these enzymes will actually tone down your immune system so, and eat the antibodies away so your immune system stops attacking itself, okay? Talked about the fact that it is enteric coated, so Wobenzyme is going to be taken 45 minutes prior to a meal or two hours after. What is the reason? These are systemic enzymes. We need to absorb them on an empty stomach. Yes? I just want to say that if you know about yesterday, I had a Parkinson's patient in here and, she, and her CoQ10 therapy that works. She also had a, a busted uh, forearm, wrist, went on Wobenzyme. Mm -hmm. They took the cast off two weeks early because of the healing properties of the world design. First hand account. But it's, it really speeds up your immune system. It's unbelievable. So it's absorbed through the lower intestine. That's why they're systemic and not digestive. Very important to take them on an empty stomach. If not, you're going to be paying for a really expensive digestive enzyme. Okay? So let's talk about how specifically it clears out the inflammation in the body. Okay? Clinically, the five characteristics of inflammation are redness, heat, swelling, pain, and loss of function, okay? All pretty standard, right? Now, what I have here is these are all the biomarkers for inflammation. Now, if you go into your doctor's office, they can take some of your blood and they can actually test and see how inflamed your body is. Um, I'm not going to go through them, but your doctor can run a test for every one of these. That's how you can actually measure how inflamed at any given point that you are. So, inflammation is the body's attempt to remove harmful substances from our body, okay? What happens is the body tries to get rid of these unwanted, and we're talking about bacteria, yeast, viruses, pollen, another allergen, and what, these are all called antigens. Now, in, re in response to the antigens, your body creates antibodies. When the antibodies are released, they link on to the antibodies, and... If your immune system is too balanced, it makes too much antibodies. So that's where those autoimmune disorders come in. We talked about the enzyme. It down-regulates those and eats the excess antibodies as well. 
So what do they make? They make what we call circulating immune system complexes, or CICs. These CICs are elevated in a number of people with autoimmune disorders, if you have an infectious disease. Um, they're also, they also affect your joint health. It's going to affect heart health. It's going to affect circulatory problems, glucose health. If you have problems with your liver, it will also do that. So these high amounts of these CICs are very, very dangerous if they're flowing through our blood. And your body also creates cytokines as a response to the inflammation. Now, that's how many things have I, have I mentioned so far? We got antigens, antibodies, CICs, cytokines. So we're at four right now. So this is all the stuff that's traveling throughout your blood, right? Now, when your body creates cytokines, we have two types of cytokines, okay? You have T1 which is pro-inflammatory. So these go to a certain point, and this is what goes down. Like I said, that NIA example, this is what's going to go down locally to wherever you're injured and promote inflammation. And then you have T2, which is anti-inflammatory, okay? Again, you want both in your body, but we want them at equilibrium. So we don't want one high T2 or high T1. We want equilibrium between the both. That's what your blood looks like with all those circulating immune system, antigens, antibodies, cytokines. They're all floating around in there, okay? We'll add, we'll add damaged proteins to that list too because they're in there as well. So the ability for, for these substances to move throughout the body is how we measure how inflamed you are, okay? That's why those biomarkers of inflammation that we listed on a couple slides ago, that's how these are measured, okay? And that's another reason why we want to have Wobenzyme to help control these. So what does Wobenzyme exactly do? We're going to show you. Okay. Essentially, your white blood cells come through and they go cruise throughout your blood and they absorb these, all these floating compounds in your body. Okay. Now, we talked about the fact that the enzymes act as catalysts and they speed up this reaction. Okay. Essentially, what happens is if you were to take this white blood cell in the middle is the strongest part of the magnet, okay? The enzyme, the white blood cell wraps around that enzyme and exposes the most dense part of the cell, and that is what absorbs the most. So again, this is your white blood cell without the enzyme. Once you take the enzyme, it wraps around that, exposes that really dense part of the cell, and that's how, how it speeds up your body's immune system. And the nice thing about it too is, once that, once that white blood cell is absorbed, all the damaged nutrients, damaged proteins, cytokines, antigens, it signals, it signals your body so you can pass it and remove it from your blood. So we talked about how the cleansing in that blood. Well, cleansing your blood is going to be a natural, natural process in, the in reducing the inflammation in your body. So that A2M is what the activated white blood cell is. Um, they've, studies have shown that it's able to remove unwanted substances from the body very, 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 very quickly. So what do, we, what, do we, what do we get from that? It's a benefit of both an acute and a chronic issue. So if you're in the yard, you hurt yourself, that's acute. If you have osteoarthritis and you're dealing with pain every day, that's what we recommend. That would be chronic. So it's actually very beneficial for both acute and chronic situations. We also have two products too that we'll get into in a little bit, but once for acute, once more for chronic. So we mentioned the fact that there's 160 clinical studies. What are some of those pertaining to? I pulled a couple of them, a couple of them for you. Um, they're all online, and I'll give you the website later. Uh, and I have copies of the presentation too. So, um, but let's talk about Alzheimer's. So. Alzheimer's decreased the TNF alpha in the blood, which is that pro-inflammatory cytokine. Uh, if they are not kept, kept in check, they actually run rampant in the brain, and it actually increases the plaque that is in your brain that is usually found in Alzheimer's patients. So by, decre by decreasing that TNF-alpha and getting everything in equilibrium, it actually decreases the formulation of those amyloid beta peptides, which is the plaque in the brain, okay? And the activated enzymes also provoke, they also promote the breakdown and clearance of the brain. So if you already have them in there, it's going to promote them breaking down and removing from your body. This is kind of a no-brainer. Osteoarthritis is a very, very big thing that we recommend this for a lot. Um, but in 2006, six, six weeks 
uh, randomized, double blind, placebo group. Um, they did, they grouped dose one with Wobenzyme, systemic enzymes, and they dosed the other one with uh, Diclofenac, which is just an over the counter, non steroidal anti inflammatory. And they found the Wobenzyme was as effective as the Diclofenac in terms of pain measured. So these patients found as great a relief with Wobenzyme as they did with this over the counter, non steroidal anti inflammatory. And the systemic enzymes were actually better tolerated in the group in terms of their GI issues too. So again, just as effective as a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, but without all the side effects. In 2006, same randomized double blind parallel group, and they came to the exact same conclusion. So there are numerous studies that are saying this Wobenzyme, or stating the Wobenzyme is as effective as the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. So as effective, they said they can be considered as effective and safe alternative NSAIDs such as diclofenac and the treatment of painful episodes in osteoarthritis of the knee. So if anybody has arthritis in the knee, this is what you want to be on. Sports medicine is a growing segment of, for the use of systemic enzymes and injuries is a no-brainer, but we're talking, but we also like to talk about what we call a microtrauma. So when you're working out or you're doing something active and you get that day, day and a half, sometimes two days after you work out, those first two days you're like, wow, I feel great. That was a great workout. And then you get some swelling on your ankle or your bicep sore, something like that. That's what we consider a micro trauma. And what is that? It's really just a bout of inflammation. So Wobenzyme is a really effective way to treat these micro traumas as if you're training or you know somebody who's training, or um, a really an athlete who's really competing on a daily or weekly basis. So, we talk, Wobenzyme is it's clinically effective, but it also has a very broad range. So, um, arthritis, rheumatoid, osteoarthritis, um, reactive, it's also very good in some fibromyalgias, cardiology, dentistry, um, immunology, neurology, oncology, urology, vascular medicine, there's a lot of clinical applications to Wobenzyme and it goes well beyond the, the realm of just joint and tissue pain. So how about some testimonial? Uh, improved recovery from sinus surgery. Wobenzyme, this is another area where Wobenzyme is extremely effective pre and post op. And the reason that it's effective for, effective for pre and post op is it prepares your body for the surgery. And what's one of the biggest things after surgery when they're cutting you? That area is what? It's swollen and it's inflamed, right? So when you take it pre and post op, you load your body with these enzymes and it allows your body to re get the swelling and the inflammation down immediately so your body can get to healing itself. So that's why it's very effective in pre and post op. So. They had oral surgery, bald bone graft, sinus lift, and implants. So it was a very serious sinus surgery. The following week, went in the surgeon's office, and he was astounded how well I was recovering. He asked how many painkillers I was taking, and he said he did not need them after the bleeding stopped. And this person was just on Wobenzyme down in Georgia. So, again, rheumatoid arthritis. This is kind of a no, this is kind of a you know kind of self-explanatory one, as we kind of already talked about, but very very good results for um, rheumatoid arthritis. Ironman World Championship athlete, <clears throat> it actually shortens the recovery time. So the recovery time after, after an event, again, what are we doing? We have a lot of micro traumas for somebody who's going on a, going for a consistent basis doing an Ironman. It's a long race, a lot of micro traumas. So improves or helps improve re recovery time. This is one of the ones that I, that I like to point out is the gout because gout is sometimes a very tricky thing to dose, sometimes the normal episodes for normal avenues for gout or usually sometimes don't work for some people. So Wobenzyme would be a kind of a secondary thing to try if it's not working. Um, they said severe gout attack. He was taking, started on a therapeutic dosage, which was 15 tablets for a day for one month. Six hours of starting the Wobenzyme, his flare up went down. So uh, very, very good for gout as well. Someone from Pittsburgh, frozen, pain, painful tennis, golf elbow, and then swollen sprain dramatically improved again. We're talking about those micro traumas, recovery times are shortened. So therapeutic dose, before I get into dosing, explain the difference. Anybody have any questions? No. Okay. Yes. 
somebody who can just manage like an hysterectomy? Absolutely. Any sort of surgery, it'll help with your recovery times. She didn't have anything before. It doesn't matter. You can still take it after. You don't need to take a pre and post op. Okay. Yep. Well, dosage? Dosage? Uh, I would probably do a therapeutic dose of the PS, and I would do probably nine a day. I would do three, three, and three. But remember, we're taking them away food, so three before breakfast, three before lunch. And I always try to, <clears throat> if you're only going to do two doses, make sure you're doing that one before bed because the enzymes are super active between 10 and 2. So usually right before bed is very, very good. What about tendonitis? I'm sorry? Tendonitis. Absolutely. But I would do, but it would be the Wobenzyme N, and I would do six a day. In the morning. Two, two, two. two you can do two, two, and two, or three, and three. Okay. Remember, they have the short half-life, so it'll be in your system all day. Okay. Yes, sir. No, no. And that's the nice thing about this. This is the people have been taking this over Europe. They recommend this. This is actually we actually need a prescription to take this, and people have been taking this for 10, 15, 20 years. No side effects. Remember, we talked about those two studies. Very, very well received. Yes, sir. My brother's got a problem with uh, deep vein thrombosis in the calf of his one leg. He's okay. Twice. Mm -hmm. uh, blood clot forms in there, and they have to, you know, inject him with like a mm -hmm. uh, blood thinner or something to dissolve the uh, blood clot. I notice that this has, can help with that. Possibly. I'm glad you asked that question because I I forgot to say something that it's very very crucial to this product. I would be very leery. I would have to clear that with his doctor for the sole reason. We talked about how it goes through and cleanses the blood. As it's doing that, it's thinning the blood naturally. So if the only, there's not a lot of things that you have a lot of cross counter, um, you have to worry about cross contamination between natural supplements to prescriptions. But this is very one. If they're on any sort of blood thinner, Coumadin, anything like that, they can't take it with this product. So if he's being injected with some sort of blood thinner, I'd be very leery to recommend it before he take the doctor. He could, but I don't know if he's going to yield the same results of something that's going to be dramatically, you know, blood thinner is pretty, it's a very intense, so I'd ask the doctor. But if he's not taking the blood thinner, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. What about people that have, like, say, cancer and there's There's actually a couple that normally comes when I've done this presentation in the past, and she's on 30 a day. She takes 30 a day, and she... She initially told me they gave her three months, and then they gave her an additional six, and that was three years ago, and she's still taking the product. Now, she's on other things as well, but Wobenzyme is her primary thing. Talking about the fact that it's cleaning it out, it also has those antifibrosis. It, it eats the... She has cancer, but you can use them from both, though. But then we get, we're get we getting into a much higher dose. So Legion, which is a very good segue to my next, my next point, therapeutic dosing. So we have Wobenzyme N, which is the classic... We have Wobenzyme PS, which is the professional strength. The PS is for acute. So that's pre and post op, somebody who's, somebody who's cancer or has cancer. This is one area where you'd be taking, they would be taking a lot of the Wobenzyme and a lot a day. We're talking more than 15 a day. That's where we recommend the PS. It's specifically formulated for the acute, acute issues, and the enzymes in there are specifically for the acute. Now, if you're chronic, more arthritis, more chronic pain, uh, things like that, fibromyalgia, that's when you want the Wobenzyme in, okay? So optimal dosage is six tablets a day, and you could do three tablets twice or two, tab or two tablets three times a day, and that's osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, um, relapsing urinary tract infections, diabetic neuropathy, multiple sclerosis. Um, now, the surgical dose, if you're going pre and post op, so for the hysterectomy, again, she didn't take it, but you can take it after that. It would be three tablets five times a day for two to six days before surgery, and then after you're doing three tablets twice a day after surgery. Okay? <coughs> Something in my throat. And children can take this, okay? But you just kind of recommend it's one tablet per 10 kilograms of body, body weight. Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, I would do the optimal, so I'd do six, six a day. I would do the N, not the PS, the N. Sometimes that's a side effect, but it's not something that's... Right, that was off their gout, though. But it was, 
It was a, they lost weight because of them relieving the gout. Okay? And so let's summary. Inflammation, healthy joints, healthy circulation. Um, this is a rather expensive product the, that I would say about 90% of the people that I've recommended it to that have taken this initially, they buy it a second time because it does work. I was in a doctor's office in New York. They had another vendor come in. He brought in lunch. One of her staff had an allergic reaction to some of the food there. It wasn't crazy. Was her throat wasn't hurt, but a mild allergic reaction, some redness, some swelling around the around the cheeks and the in the um, in the throat. Took one Wobenzyme PS. It went down almost immediately, within about 30 minutes. This is a very very powerful product. Joe talked about the fact that they got his patient had the cast off two weeks earlier. I separated my shoulder. I was taking 18 a day. In three weeks, I was back. That's a four to six week injury. Uh, but an hour before meal or about two hours after. The key is an empty stomach. It needs to be taken on an empty stomach because it needs to be absorbed in the lower intestine. Because it's absorbed in the lower intestine, it goes right into the bloodstream. And we talked about what it does in the blood. So it needs to be absorbed right into that, directly into that bloodstream. If not, it's going to help you digest your food. You're still going to see, you're still going to have a benefit from it. But it's very expensive to buy Wobenzyme for, as, as a digestive enzyme. So, because the way it's, and, and why it's so expensive is that manufacturing process. That it, because the cab, tablets are enteric coated, so they're made not to break down in acid, high acid environments, they're made to break, break down in, in very low or high pH environments, such as your lower intestine. So it enables the pass through. So I always tell people, Well, no, lemon would be acidic. No, lemon makes you alkalize. Lemon makes you alkalize? I wouldn't take it with that because if it's gonna, if it makes you alkalize, then it could break down in your stomach. And the ultimate goal is to have, the, have it be absorbed in your lower intestine. So I always tell people when they take it, to take it with a nice big glass of cool water to kind of neutralize everything in the stomach. No, 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 no. It's made to not break down in acidity, and it's made to not to goes through your goes into your stomach and passes through there. It's made to break down in a high pH or a low environment. Okay. Here's what we got on the information. So, systemicenzymesupport.org. All the clinical data are in there. It has a nice search box. You can search. Um, Doses guideline. Anyone else have any questions? That's all I got. Systemic enzyme support.org. I'll give you a copy of the presentation. It's on the last page. Welcome.